kind of funny because the first time there's been a gas crisis in a long time, I'm moving, so I've been actually depleting all my tanks. That way I can move them without having to have them filled. And still got a couple of propanes and whatnot, but a little bit of irony, and that's one thing I wanted to point out, is if you are moving, you have to kind of think about how you're going to deal with all these liquids and flammables. A couple other things i got going on. I've got my solar panels all torn down. A couple extras that I never put up. I just had it mounted on this unistrut on top of the shed. And even though my roof peak is at kind of a bad angle, it's worked out pretty well. It's kind of funny though, all of these newer LED lights, they don't work very well. Um, you'll notice kind of it's, I'm almost at dusk now. It doesn't turn on. And when it does, this right side tends to flicker a lot. Like half of the LEDs in the bank, like maybe a diode in the bridge rectifier has gone bad. Not saying a whole lot of good things about those. But it's funny because if I go and look at these, these things have been great. They're on their third year now. They're really bright. And they really keep things well lit up. And there's another little LED bug light. It's only one season in and it's already failing on me. Very dim compared to whatever the 60 watts is supposed to be. Just in the last week or two it's really dropped in brightness. I also had a lot of like lumber and a few building materials that I just kind of kept on hand. And that'll be nice because as I'm moving to the new place there will be no shed. But luckily I have enough building the materials on hand where I can kind of take care of that. You know, just a lot of little projects, like filling in some low spots, getting some more landscaping rock in here. What I've gone to is actually just using all these spare boxes, and I've just started a very specific type tool, and then I've labeled them all with my thermal label printer that I have in the office. And I'll just, I'll just print out like 30 labels for the different items all once, you know, needle nose pliers, just slap that on one of the boxes. I actually print out two, one for each side, something like that, nut drivers. On both sides, theory being that I can, when I get to the new place, I'll be able to have all these still boxed up, but I can have an end open and be able to quickly view them all. Also, all of a sudden, have immediate need for a tractor, so trying to get this sucker going. Good old engineers putting them in very poor spots for fasteners, but hey, you know what? If you think about it, there is a way to get it done without ordering a bunch of specialty tools. I might have to do a separate video on these vanguards, because that sure is a pain on this one. And I pretty much moved all my toolboxes into these pod storages, other than just the one that I typically would bring on site. And other than being impacts that are a little bit thicker, you know, they're great pneumatics and sonics. that They're pretty thin for being pneumatics. I've been able to get away pretty well with just small tool cart. And that kind of speaks to why I have so many redundancies in tools, is I've just had to have them deployed in so many different locations over the years. And, of course, there's a lot of stuff getting boxed up. You know, how do you box up clamps? Well, I figured taping them four or six at a time just together. Probably one of the best ways about it. Well, another good example is cleaning supplies. Most of that stuff, no big deal, but the place I'm moving to has high efficiency. can't use standard laundry soap. And I'm kind of sitting here with like a two-year stockpile of that stuff. Sure, I can donate it somewhere or give it off, but kind of a blunder on my part. Where do you find those mediums? Going through getting rid of stuff like old batteries, giving them one last check on the charger. You know, if they fail, <laughs> let's just get them out of here. You know, maybe if I have a core charger or something I can get reimbursed, that'd be great, but time is now. Let's get rid of stuff. I've also emptied out most of these bolt bins and put them up in these organizers, and I'm surprised by how much you can get into these suckers for the weight. I would guess that you could probably get the entire quantity I had in here into three or four of these Stanley or DeWalt style organizer bins. That just kind of goes to the overall question of, you know, like how much liquids, how much hardware do you want to have on hand? Both from like a preparedness mindness, but then also just from the not having to stop what you're doing to run to the store all the time you know that might take an hour out of your day and if you have to do that two or three times because you didn't bother to get everything figured out ahead of time that's really the beauty of something like this is just having stuff on hand but i will say when you have you know maybe 30 or 40 different bottles of various oils and liquids and cleaners and paints how do you transport all that stuff kind of biting me right now and I kind of wish I would have thought a little bit more ahead about that but then also you know look at those gas tanks what are you going to do and all of a sudden you're in the middle of a move and you have a crisis like fuel shortages so I, I guess there's a little bit of give and take luckily for me I'm not going that far away so I can just transport a lot of the flammables and whatnot outside of the storage containers or u-haul type but it's definitely kind of a little bit of a cinch in the stocking up on things plan I will say though that 
everything's gone up in price. You know, have you tried to buy a fuel filter lately? It's surprising how quickly things have jumped up and having one or two on hand has really kind of given me the ability to wait for things to be at a reasonable price instead of having to buy them at the peak. And I would guess I've saved several hundred dollars just on fixing up this older house as I'm transitioning to the new one. Whether it was worth all the square footage to store that stuff forever? Probably not. Well, I'll try to post a couple more updates. We should talk about the pods and how well it works to put stuff in those from a shop perspective. As always, have a good night. Thanks.